as you know, the theme of the conference in Estonia is civic education. So maybe we can start um, by talking a bit about the, the current crisis um, that you know, the countries across the world are facing and how that impacts civic education. I think the crisis will have quite a profound effect on civic education in the long term. You could say that for much of the 20th century, government and big government were dominant and thought often of education as about preparing citizens to obey the law, to do what they were told, to fit in with larger political structures. After 1989, faith in big government waned, not least in Estonia, and people looked to the market and to business as having the answers, and much of the arguments about education were, how do you prepare people to be productive members of the economy? Now we've seen, I think, a rebalancing because of the crisis. We've learned that a healthy economy has to not only have strong businesses and markets, but in fact the most resilient economies are ones which also have a strong civil economy. Mutuals, cooperatives, social enterprises. And if you only have narrowly based for profits, narrowly based uh, commercial profit maximizing finance, is less able to deal with change, less able to deal with shocks. And interestingly, in countries like the UK and the US, if you ask employers what they most want out of children leaving education, and they're most not getting, it's no longer the ability to work a computer or just good maths, but it's also how do you work in a community, in a society? How are you a member of a team? How do you become part of the bigger goal of the business or the enterprise? And that again, I think, is making civic education become almost sort of part of the centerpiece of what schooling should be about. And then around that, you put your maths, your science, your geography, your history, and so on. And I think I can say more about what I think that implies, but it's a very different starting point to even where we were two years ago before the crisis. So maybe you can elaborate a bit more, what, what does it imply? And, and also if you can talk a bit more specifically about what does it imply for non-profit organisations and citizen organisations, and, and what is it as their role uh, in improving civic education and, and civic activism? I think this shift has big implications for schools and big implications for non-profit organisations. For schools, it means what they have to produce when children leave at 18 or whatever is not just teenagers with good qualifications, but also teenagers with the mindsets of being good members of society. And that will often be learnt not so much through classroom civic education, but through the experience of doing projects with others, doing projects in the community. For the non-profit world, I think there's an almost sort of parallel challenge, is what are they doing to inculcate in people a different way of thinking, different habits of mind? And in some countries, the non-profit world has tended to become a service provider under contract, often for governments. But in a way, we're being taken back to the roots of civil society. So in, in countries like the UK, it's the 19th century roots, which were much more focused on what is the role of civil society in inculcating character, in inculcating habits of mind which are collaborative, pro-social, and so on. And again, that much more happens through people doing things together in their communities, not just being a service provider under contract, but bringing particularly diverse communities together to do things, which could be something as simple as clearing a local park of rubbish, or creating a local you know, food production system, or helping isolated older people feel connected in. That's where I see sort of the great role of civic organizations and of schools. And when they work together, that makes civic education very, very real. And it's part of really, to, to my mind, the great 21st challenge, century challenge is if the late 20th century was dominated by the consumerist mindset, huge investment of billions of dollars to make people get into the habit of spending money, buying goods, buying services, and believing that would make them happy. Now we've learned that doesn't make you happy and actually destroys your environment. What can we do to inculcate the habits of mind of cooperation and collaboration and civic activity working with others and through doing that actually to become happier human beings? And we've learned from the evidence of psychology and sociology is the more people collaborate, the more they give, the more they do together, 
the more this increases their well-being as human beings. This is part of our, our nature, and in some ways it's a truer and deeper nature than selfishness, the acquisition of material things. Let, let me give a few examples of how this becomes very practical and, and very every day. Um, one of the big movements of recent years has been extended schooling, uh, adding more hours to the school day. Now, in some places, you can just have the children sitting in a, you know, a computer lab from five o'clock to seven o'clock, and that's, that's good. But what I found interesting in, in many countries, for example, Australia, where I've worked, is schools also using those hours to get the children to create their own social enterprises. For example, running aquaculture businesses, which grow fish through growing fish uh, in a large building next to the school, you learn about biology, you learn about maths, but then the children go and sell the fish in the, in the community, uh, and they learn about dealing with other people, they learn about markets, but they're doing it as a, as a team project. You learn so many things through that sort of activity about community, about work, but as well as about maths and so on. Uh, and this is not traditional civic education at all, but I think maybe you learn more civic skills through doing this than anything else. And one final example, we, we created an educational website called the School of Everything, which can link anyone who wants to be a teacher and anyone who wants to be a learner of, of any age. Now, most of the, the use of that is for things like learning how to drive a car, or to fix computers, or to speak Mandarin Chinese, let's say. But our vision of that as well was that many teenagers would become teachers through this. They would be able to teach older people how to fix their computers or, or how to fix things in the community. And the web is becoming a very powerful platform for a very different kind of civic activity. And that feedback of society teaching and empowering society, which I see as the future of civic education. I, I feel what you've just said uh, probably resonates really well with people you know, who's who are at this conference right, uh, right now in, Est in Estonia. And, uh, and maybe like, if people want to get engaged, I, I know you, the Young Foundation work collaborates with mm. many, many organizations across the world. Mm. So if there are people in Estonia mm. who'd want mm. to engage in these networks, um, are, is, is it possible for them to do that then mm. how? We, we host a very um, sort of bottom-up network called the Social Innovation Exchange, SIX, which links organizations in social innovation across the world. We've done it with almost no money. It's done by the mutual enthusiasm of organizations in China or Korea or America or Brazil or, or, or Britain, but trying to pool our, our experience and our ideas. And in the last year, a lot of our work has been on how to use the economic recession as a creative, energizing opportunity. If you see empty shops in the high street, how can young people take them over, turn them into you know, fast colleges or, or whatever? And I would urge anyone in Estonia to get involved in this network, share your examples, share your experiences in what is this, much, this broad field of how do we speed up innovation to meet social needs. And in a way, every single project in that network is about civic education in its very widest sense, because it's all about experiment and all about learning and all about trying to experiment, uh, accelerate the learning process because none of us know the answers. None of us know how you cope with a really profound financial crash. None of us know how you solve problems like climate change or an aging society. We learn by doing and by doing we learn. And this is what makes the whole field uh, so exciting. And to my mind, really everything then becomes part of civic education.